Jesus went to celebrate the Passover festival together with his friends, the disciples. Passover is the most important yearly festival for the Jewish people and begins by sharing a meal together. Jesus sent Peter and John into town to prepare for the feast. He told them they would meet a man on the way and that they should follow him to the house he was going to, then ask the owner there for a room where they could celebrate. Everything happened just as Jesus foretold. When Jesus and his disciples started the celebration, Jesus took some water and started washing his disciples' feet. Peter didn't think Jesus should do that. It was not the custom for a teacher to wash the feet of his students. Normally it would be the other way around. Jesus explained, this is an example of how you should treat each other. Follow my example. No one should look down on anyone else. Instead, help each other, lift each other up, always be ready to do good things for each other, even when it's something humbling, like washing each other's feet. When they started to eat, Jesus took the bread, broke it, and gave a piece to each of his disciples. This bread stands for my body that I will give up for you. After that, he took a cup of wine and passed it around. This wine stands for my blood that I will shed in order to forgive all your mistakes. When you celebrate Passover, always remember that my death has saved you from eternal death, that I have defeated death itself. Then Jesus looked sad, and he told his disciples, One of you will betray me to my enemies. The disciples started to ask each other who would do such a thing. Peter stood up and promised Jesus, I will never betray you. I would even die for you. But Jesus said to him, Peter, tonight, by the time the sun rises, you will deny three times that you even know me. Jesus knew that his disciple Judas was the one who would betray him. And after dinner, Judas left to tell Jesus' enemies where they could find him. After this all happened, Jesus took his disciples away to a garden to pray. Jesus and his disciples arrived in the garden that was called Gethsemane. Jesus told them, this will be a difficult time. Please stay awake and pray for the faith to get through it. Then he went away from them to talk to God. Father, if there is some possible way that I don't have to suffer this fate, please show me the way out. But if not, I will obey you, even though it's not my will. Jesus was so emotional, and he prayed so intensely that he was sweating blood. When he went back to his disciples, he found that they had fallen asleep. He woke them up and said, why are you sleeping? You need to pray that you can be ready for what's ahead. While he was saying this, Judas arrived, accompanied by armed soldiers. He went up to Jesus and gave him a hug, which was the sign to the soldiers who they should arrest. The other disciples began to understand what was going on. One of the disciples attacked one of the soldiers and cut off his ear. Jesus told him to stop. No more, he said. Whoever uses violence will die by it as well. Jesus healed the soldier's ear. Then he asked them, why didn't you arrest me during the day? I was preaching to the crowds in public places, and I never hid myself. But now is your time, the time where darkness reigns. The disciples had already run away in fear, and Jesus was taken away to be questioned. There the soldiers were mocking Jesus. They blindfolded him and hit him and asked, Tell us, prophet, who hit you? Peter had secretly followed them and was watching from a distance. Suddenly a woman recognized him. Haven't you been traveling with that man? No, Peter said. You must have mistaken me for someone else. Aren't you one of the people he called disciples? The man asked. No, I've never even met the man, Peter answered. But another man insisted. I also saw you with him. Peter shouted angrily, I don't know him. At that moment, the sun rose and Jesus looked right at Peter. Peter remembered what he had told him during supper, and he went away crying. The religious leaders started questioning Jesus. Are you the Savior sent from God? Yes, I am, 
Jesus answered. They were angry because Jesus was claiming to be as important as God himself. They took him to the Roman governor, Pilate, to be judged. In front of Pilate, the religious leaders started accusing Jesus. He's planning a rebellion against the government. He tells the people not to pay their taxes. He claims to be the new king. Pilate listened to them and then asked Jesus himself, Is this true? Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, I am, Jesus replied. When Pilate returned to the religious leaders, he said, I don't see any reason that he deserves punishment. They continued trying to convince him, We know that he's dangerous. You have to put him to death. Then Pilate realized a way he could get himself out of the situation. This man came from Galilee, right? That means I'm not responsible for him. He should be judged by King Herod. He's in town now, so take Jesus there to be judged. So that's what they did. King Herod had already heard a lot of stories about Jesus and the miracles he did. So he said, perform a miracle for me and I'll let you go free. Jesus said nothing. The king continued asking him more questions, but Jesus remained silent. After a while, Herod got bored. He gave Jesus a kingly robe to wear and put a crown made of thorns on his head. <laughs> then he and his soldiers mocked him, celebrating him as king of the Jews. After that, he was sent back to Pilate. Pilate still had no intention of sentencing Jesus, and Herod hadn't found anything wrong either. So Pilate asked him, Don't you want to say anything to defend yourself? Don't you know that I have the power to set you free? Jesus answered, You have power over me only because God has given it to you. The religious leaders had gathered together a huge crowd outside, and they were all shouting, Put him to death! Pilate tried one last thing to save Jesus. During the Passover festival, it was customary to let one prisoner go free. So he brought an infamous murderer named Barabbas out of prison and asked the crowd, Who should go free? Jesus or Barabbas? The people shouted, Barabbas! And what should I do with Jesus? Pilate asked. Kill him! cried the people. Pilate was afraid that the crowd would start a revolt against him, so he gave in to their demands. Before he sent Jesus away to be killed, he stood in front of the crowd and washed his hands, saying, I am not responsible for the death of this innocent man. After being sentenced to death, Jesus had to carry the cross himself on which he would be killed. They passed through the city on their way to the site of the execution, and many people watched and mocked him. Jesus was to be crucified outside the city on a hill called Golgotha, which means the place of skulls. The soldiers stripped Jesus naked, then nailed him to the cross. They put a sign above his head that said, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two criminals were also crucified at the same time as Jesus. One of them mocked him. Are you God's son or what? If you are, why don't you just get off the cross and take us down with you? The other criminal interrupted him. Do you still have no fear of God, even now that you're about to die? You and I deserve this punishment, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, please remember me when you're with God in paradise. Jesus replied to him, Today you will be there with me. Many people had come to watch the execution. Some of the religious leaders and others had come to mock Jesus. Some of Jesus' close friends were there as well, including his mother, Mary Magdalene, and John. Jesus looked down at the people who were responsible for his suffering and asked God, 
Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Then the sky grew dark in all the land, and it would stay that way for three hours. Jesus was about to die. With his last breath, he cried out, My God, my God, why have you left me? Then he died, and the earth shook. The Roman officer who was overseeing the execution was shocked and said, This man must have really been the Son of God. After that, Jesus was taken down from the cross and buried in a tomb. Jesus' body was buried in a tomb, and the entrance was sealed with a huge stone and guarded by Roman soldiers. A couple days later, Mary Magdalene went to the grave together with two other women. They wanted to anoint Jesus' body with oil, which was the custom. On the way there, they worried about how they would remove the huge stone and if the soldiers would even let them through. But when they got there, the stone was already rolled away and the soldiers were gone. They went into the tomb and all they found there were the cloths that Jesus' body had been wrapped in. Then a messenger from God, an angel, appeared to them. He said, don't be afraid. Jesus isn't here anymore. He's alive. The women were overjoyed and went to tell the other followers of Jesus about what had happened. The others couldn't believe it at first. Peter got up and ran to the grave to see for himself. He found the tomb empty, just like the women had described it. Deep in thought, he went away, puzzled about what might have happened to Jesus' body. The same day, two of the disciples, Jesus' friends, were leaving Jerusalem on their way to a small town. They were having a deep discussion about everything that had happened. Then Jesus joined them and asked what they were talking about, but they didn't recognize him. They told him everything that had happened in the last days, and he explained to them why it all had to happen that way. Still, they didn't recognize that it was Jesus talking to them. In the evening, they invited him to eat supper with them. When Jesus broke the bread, they finally recognized who he was. But right at that moment, he disappeared. A while later, some of the disciples were meeting together. Some of them had already seen Jesus alive again after his death and had told the others about it, full of joy. But one of the disciples, Thomas, couldn't believe it. I have to see him with my own eyes, he said, and feel the wounds in his hands from the nails on the cross. Then I'll believe it. At that very moment, Jesus appeared in the room and greeted them all. He showed Thomas his wounds and encouraged him. You believe now because you can see that it's true. Happy are those who believe even without seeing. Then they ate together and were overjoyed to have Jesus with them again. After coming back from the dead, Jesus spent 40 days together with his friends, who he called disciples. One day, he gathered them all together on a hill. The time had come for him to leave. He had one last thing to tell them. To me has been given all the power and authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, I am sending you out to all the nations of the world. Make them my disciples too. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as a sign that they belong to me and teach them everything that you learned from me. You can be 100% sure that I will be with you always, no matter where you are, until the end of time. After that, Jesus was covered in a cloud and vanished. A few days later, the disciples were gathered in a room, praying. Jesus had told them to wait for someone who would take over for him the Holy Spirit. But of course, they had no idea who that was. While they were praying, something that looked like flames entered the room and landed on each of the disciples' heads. They started speaking in a lot of foreign languages. Filled with the Holy Spirit, they went out on the street and told the people there about Jesus. On that day, more than 3,000 people started following Jesus.